Hello, my name is Wendy Bacon. I'm a lecturer at The Open University and I work with Emily BI. And this is going to be a tutorial on using Alevin to create a single cell expression matrix using single cell data, ideally from a droplet based strategy. Some important points about this, I'm going to do this within the human cell atlas uh, galaxy instance. This has all the same tools that are on the galaxy, any galaxy.eu instance, although they're just a little bit easier to find because it's set up for single cell in general. So you should be able to use any galaxy instance you want in the European uh, group. It just may be a little bit trickier to find tools. So if you ever stock because it's not coming up, if you search tool and you're not using the human cell atlas instance, go through the, the little, our gorgeous graduation cap here, right? And then you'll be able to click on the tools directly in the tutorial. So if you ever stock, that's, that's your get out of, get out of jail free card. The other thing to note is this screencast is all about helping you navigate Galaxy. All of the important scientific information is within the tutorial. This is purely for if you get stuck. So if you're able to blitz through the whole tutorial on your own without having to use this video, do not bother coming on because there's no no other secret information that I've, I've stored in this video. This is entirely for if you're getting stuck or parameters not working and trying to figure out what you're supposed to do. Right, onwards with the tutorial. Now, normally at the beginning of a tutorial, we do a load of getting data. We copy all the links to the data. We come over here, we go to paste fetch data and we're able to paste our links in and then download it. With bigger files that can sometimes take a little while. So I quite um, like the little sneaky way. So that's why I'll often when I make a tutorial also give an input history. So I'm gonna nab my input history and I'm gonna import that directly. Terrible data management there. You should probably make this something else. So it'll be um, part one tutorial. Let's go. All right. And yes, it also, if you do it that way, you don't have to rename the data set. And if I was quite on my game and put any important labels on here, that can sometimes, or uh, tags on here, that can sometimes help. It's not that big of a help in this tutorial. Right. You're then given some questions to look at different things, right? We can we can examine. Oh, what happens if I do that? Loads, right? And you can look at this here and examine it. That's pretty good. We can look at all the information in our GTF file. Oh, four for four and it not automatically downloading. That's pretty good. We can look at all of our loads of transcripts information. So you can examine this to your heart's delight. Ooh, that's quite short. I wonder why that is. <gasps> Read the tutorial. And now we're going to start actually doing stuff. So our first tool of the day is we're going to use our GTF to gene list. As I said before, in some instances, this doesn't come up if you search it here. So you will need to use the tutorial version. The tools exist. Sometimes the search bar is just a little bit wonky. All right, what we want is our GTF file. It's probably not gonna even recognize anything else. Yeah, that's a fairly good point. This has come up as a FASTA, this has come up as GFF, and these have both come up as FASTQ, so that's good, it's the right format. Um, feature type, we want transcript. And at this point, I'm uh, copying over what's in the tutorial. So, it, oh yeah, the header is just about making it format properly so that it, the tools will talk to each other. We're not gonna flag my new chondral genes yet, don't worry. That will come up. This should automatically grab my FASTA. So I'm gonna filter that. All right. And this may take a little while. And through the magic of pre-recording, we are there. So I can change this to my map and they uncle this file this gz file you can become the filter faster and now we're going to run alvin it's going to be this is the factory of this of this tutorial it does all of our work for us Okay, and you can use sometimes, if you're very lucky, like we've got mouse now here that you could use, which is pretty cool, because that's MM10. I think it's slightly different from the one that we normally use, but man, that will speed up your work if you use the inbuilt transcriptome. 
but instead we'll we'll build our own. So we want our FASTA, which has been filtered. Yes, that's fine. And now we're filling it in. Want read one, and that's read two. This is drop seek data. And this is going to take a long time. And we're in. OK, and now we can look at different files. Ooh, these are nice files. Da, da, da. Sure. We can look at our matrix. Ooh. Ooh, look at those numbers. Those numbers are important. And if you ever get kind of confused on what's what, it's helpful when you can look at like the columns versus the rows and that, that, that's that's good information <laughs> and now we're going to make some droplet plots oh and i should be zoomed in there we go okay so we want our droplet barcode rank plot not in that format we want raw cv frequency cool Oh, this is very good remembering to label a plot. I never remember to do this in Galaxy. So this is this is some excellent, excellent data management technique right there. And we can look at our lovely barcode plot. Ooh. Um, and then we can look at, you know, thresholds it gives us. Cool, cool. And I'm going to be good and I'm going to rename my plot. And then, you know, this is, I'm going to be honest, these numbers are poor. <laughs> so helpfully it's giving you images because this is downsampled data. So yeah, there's a reason it looks rough. Although to be fair, it would be kind of rough anyway. Okay, so let's redo this. Let's redo this jazz. All right, but this time we are going to input in matrix market format. Plants made dot matrix. So we're looking at Alevin processing. And we can look at what Alevin did. Whoa. Rename. And onwards and upwards. We're going to run Alvin again. I'm going to cheat and rather than look for the tool, I'm just going to rerun it. All right. <laughs> and this time, maybe this time, uh, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to have keep CB fraction is going to be one and frequency th threshold is going to be three. So rather than the default of 10. And that way it's going to keep way more of my stuff rather than applying its own threshold so that I can apply a threshold. And we're there and we can again look at all these lovely outputs. We can look at our matrix, see what's going on with that. Ooh, these numbers look different. Uh, or do they? Uh, yes. So you can examine that all you want. Oh, I should have done this, but I forgot. It is helpful to try and remember which Alvin run is which. So you definitely want the later numbers when you're, um, yeah, when you're working uh, on the next tools. So let's do that. And again, you can use the tutorial version in order to find these tools. So you can see the two versions there. I'm getting all the later things, so that's good. And we're going to rename everything. So this is going to be, what, matrix table? Sure. Just because everything else I named a table, and so we're stuck with that now.
Lovely stuff. Okay, so we need to add in a whole bunch of information. And so again, we'll, we'll use our favorite GTF file to pull all this information. So we've got gene, gene ID, suppress header, yes, because that's just how the tools work together and how the formats work. And what I want to pull is gene ID, gene name, and whether or not it's mitochondrial. So yes, I want to flag this. Oh, sorry. That one. That's the one that I want to flag. I'll flag everything. And then we no longer need to filter a FASTA like we did before. And we're there. And we can look at this. Ooh. Uh, yeah, so now we have all of our lovely gene information. Ta-da! But we need to get this information into this gene table, so we need to sort of organize it as such that'll do that. And so how we're going to do that is with our join to datasets function. I want to join gene table, column one, gene information. Oh, ah, I do this every time. Remember to make sure that the data type is tabular. There we go. Well, our gene table, gene information, and then we want yes, yes, no, no. And then we also want cut. Oh, that's advanced cut. I don't want advanced cut. I want that one. Okay. Columns one, four, and five. And so this is now our annotated gene table. And that looks a lot better. So this is now in the exact same order that our, our matrix is in. So now we can put the two together. So let's read it in. And we want our matrix, our new gene table and our barcode table. And now we can finally run empty drops. So we want the output object, which we definitely remembered to label properly. And then I don't think we really have to put anything else. Yes. And we're off, and we can see our cool output. Ooh. Ooh. Um, and then our object, we can, oh, this is some interesting, interesting things there. That's cool. So we're gonna rerun that because obviously that's not, really going to work for our fake data that we have. Ooh, new version, you say? Sure. I'm in. Okay. And this time we're going to say the lower bound is going to be five because it's downsampled data. And also don't like freak out if this number is 24 or 22 or something. Like it's all gonna be pretty close. There is an element of randomization within this tool, so don't stress. Okay, and now oh, I put in the number five, so I'm gonna make this five if you are my object. By object I mean tabular output. Oh, 
Okay. And so I should have around, well, hopefully around exactly 111 barcodes. Cool, this is great, but not the right format at all for the thing I want to do. Come to me, SC Easy. And so I'm going to go single experiment and data. That's what I want. And we're finally there. We have our and data object and we can move forward with our lives. Huzzah! However, it is only actually 400,000 reads of the total thing. And there's only really one lane where you might want to be combining multiple lanes. And thus, we hit the second half of the tutorial. This is where we're combining FASTQ files. Now, you're very welcome to go through this entire tutorial six more times, or, or indeed seven if you want to get the full FASTQ data. So you'd have to redo this as well. Um, and then put them together in a history. Top tip for that if you're working on it. Oh, you'll see all my messy histories. Um, is that when you create your new history, this is my new history of lovely FASTQ files, right? And let's say, sure, uh, you've done this a whole bunch of times on your different on your different data sets, you can just click and drag over and then you can start with your new history and it's brilliant. Okay, but we're not gonna do this a bunch more times. So instead, we're just going to grab the input history. So I'll open that link again. All right. And here we are. And, and this is, I went through and added little labels, which you can do by clicking on any data set and adding a little tag, um, just so that I would know which one was, you know, male, wild type, et cetera, all the metadata, which is quite important. So we have all of our data. All of the data is H5AD, otherwise we would come over here and, you know, change the data type. Um, but that all looks fine, so we're going to start with concatenating object. And this can go very wrong if you don't click it correctly, so make sure you start with one there. And I, uh, yeah, we're still using the downsampled stuff to make it a bit easier. And then you want two through seven here. Make sure you don't accidentally click one again, or you end up with essentially eight libraries where there's actually only seven. And yeah, we want intersection of variables so they don't just keep adding the same, you know, metadata field twice and just add a dash one or whatever. And we want batch, separators that, onward we go. And this is going to stitch all of our data sets together in a meaningful way. And now we can use one of my all time favorite tools. Ooh. And we're gonna learn all sorts of stuff. I mean, to be fair, what's cool now is that you could look in this little window and get all sorts of information about your, your object, which is awesome and didn't used to exist. So gold star to the developers of that, which I believe one of them is Mehmet. So gold star to you, Mehmet. Um, we can get even more information by running this get me the more information tool, which will prove very useful to you when you're trying to manipulate your metadata, which we're going to be doing so soon. And metadata is like, where did the sample come from? Was this knockout or was this wild type in this case? And now we can look. This will tell us, you know, our cells by genes. This will tell us all the lots of the different metadata we have. We can look at our columns of metadata and say, oh, this is cool. This gives me some sort of maths from the empty drops. This is telling me my batch information. So these are all from the first one. And then later on, there's a one. Um, and then variables. So this is information about each gene. So it's symbol, whether it's mitochondrial or not here. Um, and if we look at, yes, our experimental design, right? So when we add these from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so this would be considered batch 0 because it's the first one we added. And then we added 2, so this would become batch 1, and so on and so forth. So you end up with batches 0 through 6. All right, let's add in some metadata, shall we? So we're going to use this information to change it because calling N701 batch 0 is very confusing. So let's stop that. All right, so we're going to go with replace text. And 
Then we want our observations. So this is our cell data. And remember that these numbers are, this is found from that experimental design object. This is how you can figure out which batch is supposed to be what. We only had one female. And we're going to rename that whole column sex. And we only want that those columns rather than you know if we look at this what we're interested in is creating a lovely column that's useful here we don't want to repeat all of this extra information so let's cut it again don't want advanced cut all we want is c9 all right and then this should give us yes our column of sex metadata and now we're going to do everything again, but we're going to label them by genotype instead. So let's do this again. But we're going to switch it and it's going to be 0, 3, 4, 5. And you're going to be wild type. 1, 2, 6. Knockout. And then we're going to be calling this genotype. And then now we can call that our genotype data. Oh, metadata. Okay. And now we're going to paste two files side by side. Genotype data and sex data. Do my tab. Yes. I mean, you can probably skip that step and just uh, manipulate and data like we're going to do in a second all at the same time. But that's how I did it the first time. And so that's what I'll forever do it. <laughs> In case anything goes wrong, you've at least saved yourself a little bit earlier on an easier to function step. And yeah, that looked right. Okay. And then next up, we're going to be manipulating the end data by adding that information in. So add new and we want observations and it's going to be that. And while that's working, we also know that there's some labeling is poor so we're going to try and rename these categories of annotation so rather than where we have it being batch 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 we're going to rename them their actual indices from the experiment and this I've seen people fail here because if you get to this step and it doesn't work it's often because uh, you didn't actually uh, concatenate all of the data sets in that very first concatenate step. So if this one fails for you, check that and make sure you didn't accidentally add like one data set twice or missed off a data set. And we're so, so close. Got all of our lovely C. Now we have genotype and sex are in our observations or our cells information. And now the final thing is we did all that work flagging the mitochondrial reads. We want to not have a column that says true or false. We want a column that says, you know, how will, what percentage of mitochondrial genes are in this cell. So we're going to use that information now. So we've got our, yes, our, our output format and data sure copy no insert field change ah gene symbols we don't we want it to look within the column that is talking about our mitochondria so we're gonna trick it into looking within the mitochondrial one because it's slightly more accurate to count the mitochondrial the way that we have done um, using the gtf file rather than just the names necessarily
and we are there, my friends. So if we'll we'll re rewrite the name of this. Okay, and then for my own sanity, now that it has all of these objects in it and they're all labeled and it's all lovely, um, I'm gonna just remove them. Um, yeah, and I was using these tags in some of these to distinguish between whether I let Alavin throw its own thresholds or I depended on empty drops only. All right, and so the only tag I'll leave this one with then is I'm gonna leave it with, um, cause it's 400K reads. And that's important to realize this is not the full object. This is only 400k reads per uh, fastq, so it's a downsampled object. Right. So we've done all that. Awesome. It's just because it goes a bit faster in a tutorial. We've done all that. Awesome. Fantastic. There are other ways you can pull data if you aren't as um, interested in taking it from raw. If you want to believe other people's pre-processing steps, we can download the exact same data just with the EBI's um, pre-processing, which, you know, for better or for worse, it's amazing because the way it works is they'll apply the same general pre-processing standards to everything, but there is a lot, if you're looking within a specific data set or a specific data cell type, there is also the other side of you want to cu uh, uh, curate your analysis and for a specific cell type or group. So there's definitely swings and roundabouts for having a sort of standard pipeline or for having a targeted pipeline. These are the parameters that work for these cells based off of what we're finding in these samples. So it just it depends on how you want to access the data. So you have it either way. And then it's not in, you know, obviously it's four files right now. So it's not in the form the format that you want. So we have to read it in and that's fine. So we pick our matrix and our gene table and our barcodes. And keep in mind, these will have already had some uh, extensive filtration on them. And the experimental design goes there. Yeah, there shouldn't be, I don't think there's anything for that, yeah. So the, the data will look a little bit different because it's already had that pre-processing. And we're done. Congrats on making it to the end. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you had fun. Let's be honest, the next tutorial is far more fun because that's when you get to make your plots. So I'll see you on the other side.